So this right here is our current TV, right? So it's a 55 inch, 1080p, really nothing crazy um, that we got in 2014, but it is time to upgrade it. So as we could see here, um, it's a bit of a thick boy and you can see with the TV mount, it sits pretty far off the wall, um, a full five and a half inches, which is a lot. Okay, don't believe social media. <laughs> nice. And basically today we'll be upgrading it to the 55 inch frame TV uh, from Samsung over here. It's a spot on the couch right here where he's just chilling right now. Hey buddy. I have a helper guys. I'm you're going to help me with the TV. Yeah. Are you excited for the new TV? Okay. Where's the new TV? In the back. In the box. Where are we gonna put it? Over there. Over there on the wall? If you're in the market for a new TV, a lot of the times you're just going to be look at three main features. You're going to look at the size, the resolution, and probably the display technology and a few features that it comes with. But one thing we often overlook is how the TV is going to look in our living room. At the end of the day, the TV is usually the main focal point of your living room and what your furniture is going to be based around. And Samsung has really doubled down on this. So with the idea of the frame TV, as you see behind me, it's the fact that when the TV is not in use as a regular television, it could be used as a piece of art. So always on in the background, being used to generally perceive paintings or any other family pictures you have, really anything you want. In terms of setting up the TV, it was one of the easiest ones I've ever had to set up, especially if you have a Samsung or Android phone. I think, I'm not sure if this works with all Android phones or just Samsung phones, but I have the S21 Ultra, so I was able to do the perfect color cal calibration with my phone, where it uses the camera on your phone to calibrate the color, and you can see the difference from straight out the box and then after calibration. The one thing that I love about this frame TV is, although you're paying a premium, here's one of the reasons why, it's already coming with its own mount for the wall, and the mount is specific to the television so that it sits flush to the wall. Now the mount is really easy to install, but I will say one thing about it. I do wish that Samsung would spend a little bit more and give you a mount for the size of your TV. So the way this mounting system is, is they give you two pieces and depending on the size of the TV that you own, so 43, 55, 65, whatever it is, you're gonna spread the mounts out a bit further apart to support the TV, which is obviously cost effective for Samsung because they just have to make one mount that matches all their products, all their lineup of the frame TV, and you just have to calculate the distance yourself to ensure that it's on the wall based on the size of your TV. The only thing about that is it gets a bit annoying because you have to make sure that it is perfectly aligned based on a piece of paper that they give you and that you have to level both uh, of the mounts to make sure that it's gonna sit level on the TV even though you could adjust it after. You wanna make sure it sits level on the wall. So it's just an extra step when mounting the TV. In the box, you're also gonna find the stand for the TV if you don't plan on mounting it to the wall, but to be honest, if you're buying a TV like this for the aesthetic frame of an art piece, you'd want to mount it on the wall. One huge advantage about this TV, and I think going forward, a lot of companies should look at this, is this whole one connect box system that they have. So you only have one um, fiber optic wire that goes to the TV, and then you can pass that through the wall into the one connect box. And then you never have to worry about getting to the back of the TV again. Everything is connected to your one connect box. So once the TV is on your wall, there is really no reason to have to remove it, even if you want to add a new console or another input, a PC, laptop, whatever you want to do, it's all already plugged in and you just have to connect it to the one connect box. And it also comes with their uh, Samsung smart remote thingy, which I actually like this, uh, this remote, it's very sleek and it's also, I guess, solar powered in the back and you could just charge it USB-C um, at the bottom. So you have your AI Samsung powered QLED 4K resolution 3840 by 2160 screen. It has a matte display, as I mentioned, it has Wi-Fi. it has all the smart assistants that you want. So it has Amazon Alexa, Bixby, Google Assistant, there's built-in AirPlay, you could do screen mirroring with your phone, with your Android phone. When it comes to the price, it's generally going to be a lot more expensive than a similar spec television that is not frame or art mode or whatever, but you're really paying for that premium aesthetically. Now, I would not 
recommend this to be your television if you're looking to build like a home theater, movie room, gaming center, console, whatever you want to call it. This is really an aesthetic piece that you're paying for. So for example, this is in our living room, which, you know, if we're hosting people, this is where we're going to sit. This is where we're going to chat, have coffee and really entertain people and not where we're going to sit and consume family night movies. Although we are going to watch movies here, this is not where we're going to have, you know, our high end sound system and everything. We do have that in the basement. We have a different setup, home theater style, I guess, if you want to call it just a 75 inch TV with a sound system. Whereas here it's going to be more for the aesthetic. So this is the look that ties in, you know, with the fireplace and the plant and the, the stone on the wall. This is really, I guess, your cozy little Instagrammable living room, if you will. And I say that be, even though there's a Steam Deck behind me, I was testing it out. Trust me, my wife does not want the Steam Deck here. That stays downstairs. Uh, but I was just testing it out on the Fame TV. Normally there would be a candle there. In terms of the, the apps, everything it has all the apps that you need to enjoy content without any additional services. So you have all the streaming services built in. You just need to have subscriptions for them. Um, you have GeForce Now apps. You have obviously some sports apps. You just need to log in. So you really don't need anything additional plugged into it. You could you could do GeForce Now. Uh, so you could play games based on your some of the games from your Steam library, your Epic Games library, or your Ubisoft uh, library. You could play games directly on your TV. Basically. You could enjoy this for gaming as well. I don't see any problems with it. At the end of the day, what you're paying for is its unique design and the fact that it could be used when it's not in use to display art. You could use your own photos. You could use the ones from the Samsung library. You could download pictures off the internet and display those as well. Um, so you could display any pictures you want in art mode. The TV has multiple sensors for brightness. It's gonna adjust the brightness based on the brightness in your room overall. It's gonna also turn off uh, completely and has a, a sensor that when somebody walks into the room, it'll automatically go into art mode, which is really helpful as well for, I guess, energy consumption and stuff like that. Um, but it works really well in art mode. We've had great comments about it. We're looking to maybe get a bezel. We just don't know what color yet um, to match the aesthetic of the living room. And obviously I will say one of the cons is since you are paying a premium for the design of the TV, you might not be getting the best picture quality for the price that you're paying. So for example, if you take the same price, like a $2,000 version, which is at this TV, I think brand new is $2,000 uh, Canadian for a 55 inch 4K TV, whereas you could go look at an OLED C1 potentially or something. So you're gonna get better image quality, but you're not gonna get that whole frame TV look. Paying the premium is only for aesthetic purposes at the price point. Great TV, great image quality, blah, blah, blah. But for the price you're paying, you get much better image quality and even a larger TV than the frame TV. That'll do it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment, subscribe, and I will catch you guys next time.